Caffeine. Most of us consume it daily, but have you ever wondered how it actually works? What's it doing inside your body? Can it be harmful? Well, I'm going to explain all of this and more, and watch until the end to learn some of the surprising medical uses caffeine has that you probably hadn't heard about. Caffeine is the most commonly consumed psychoactive drug globally. Every year, an estimated 120,000 tonnes of caffeine are ingested by humans. Caffeine is produced by many plant species, mostly ones native to Africa, East Asia and South America. It's found in their leaves, seeds and fruits. These plants evolved to produce caffeine for a range of survival mechanisms, like deterring herbivores from eating them, or attracting bees to increase their pollination. Like bees, humans too have an attraction to caffeine due to the positive effects it has on us. Most of our caffeine consumption is from the kaffir plant. The kaffir plant produces seeds, or beans, which is used to make your coffee. So, how does caffeine affect your body? The process of a drug influencing your body's physiology is called pharmacodynamics. For caffeine, the pharmacodynamic effects are mostly derived from its influence on adenosine receptors. From the moment you wake up in the morning, a chemical called adenosine is being produced by your body and its concentration will rise as the day goes on. This build-up of adenosine is one of the main forces that makes you feel tired and allows you to fall asleep each night. During sleep, adenosine levels will then be reset, allowing you to wake up feeling refreshed and for the cycle to repeat itself again. Adenosine causes sleepiness through binding receptors on cells all over your body, which has a range of physiological outcomes. These include relaxing your myocardium, or heart muscle, narrowing your airways, and also inhibiting neurons from firing in your brain. So imagine you could block the effects of adenosine in your body, preventing you from feeling tired. Well, that's exactly what caffeine does. When you have a caffeinated drink, the caffeine will enter your bloodstream, where it can then competitively bind to adenosine receptors all over your body, blocking adenosine from binding to them and essentially preventing it from doing its natural job of making you feel tired. Because of this, Caffeine belongs to a class of drugs called eugeroics, meaning a wakefulness promoting drug. The increased alertness that we feel from caffeine is one of the reasons it's so popular across the globe. Another reason for its popularity that you might not be aware of is its impact on dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, often referred to as the happy hormone. Caffeine can temporarily increase the amount of dopamine produced by your body and also improve dopamine receptors' ability to bind to it. Notably, dopamine also acts on the reward pathways in your brain, whose activation can lead to addiction. Caffeine's benefits can also be extended to athletic performance, where sports research has shown its benefits on both endurance activities and muscular power. All of this is great whilst it lasts. However, Caffeine binding to adenosine receptors is a reversible process. It therefore has an average half-life of 6 hours in the body, meaning 6 hours after you drink a coffee, only half the amount of caffeine ingested will remain in your body. Whilst this is happening, adenosine concentrations are still rising, meaning that when the caffeine eventually wears off, all that adenosine can flood back into their receptors and make you feel tired. This is why you typically get that sudden wave of tiredness a few hours after having a caffeinated drink. As well as being a socially popular drug, it also has some impressive uses that you might not have realised about until now. Firstly, when added to other analgesic agents, for example, paracetamol, caffeine can improve the degree of pain relief someone experiences. Caffeine also has a role to play in paediatric medicine. Premature infants can develop a condition called apnea of prematurity, which means the patient has episodes of breathing cessation. This can occur because of obstructive causes in the airway, or central neurological reasons, due to the immaturity of the premature infant's body. Caffeine can be effective at preventing these apneic episodes by stimulating the respiratory centre in the brain, amongst other things. Some research has also found a link between increased caffeine consumption and reduced risks of developing Parkinson's disease. There are, of course, many negative impacts of caffeine as well. 
caffeine can cause anxiety, or worse than already existing anxiety disorders. In fact, the DSM-5 even recognises caffeine-induced anxiety disorder as a diagnosis. Consumption of excessive amounts of caffeine for a prolonged period of time can also lead to dependence on the drug, where stopping its consumption can lead to withdrawal symptoms. These include headaches, tiredness and low mood. Now that you know everything about caffeine, it would make my day if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.